Hello, I'm Stephen Rakusik with South Dakota Public Broadcasting. I'm Del Drogi, Professor of Biology at Dakota State University. And today we're going to dissect the crayfish. Yeah, Steve, we're going to look at a crayfish today as a great example of a very interesting group of animals, the arthropods. Okay. And so, yeah, we're going to look internally, and actually because of the sophistication of the appendages of crayfish to handle food and to catch it, mash it up and things, the internal anatomy is relatively simple, as we'll see. How do you suggest? Okay. The scalpel or the scissors? Yeah, or? I usually start with, a, with, a, with scissors, and what we want to do on the crayfish is cut through the carapace, this, uh, the cephalothorax, and where the cephalothorax and the abdomen meet here, you can see there's a little gap and you can get the scissors under that. And then you want to cut forward along, about down, about halfway down the side. Any chances of... Well, you want to kind of press up against the upper surface as you cut. You don't want to... You, you really can't damage too much. But I usually cut up to about the eye and then turn to the other side. You can even remove appendages if you want to. You know, if the appendages are getting in your way like that one sort of is. <laughs> We're kind of done with those now. And so you just cut up again toward the eye. You can also notice that, I mean, that hard exoskeleton. I can listen yeah, to it here. Yeah, you can hear it crunch. And, I'm and not sure if the microphone's yeah, picking that up. Yeah, but, uh, and the crayfish, crustaceans, have the hardest exoskeleton. They have calcium salts and things mm -hmm. that, that, like calcium carbonate, which is like limestone, that, that is impregnated into their um, exoskeleton. And that's why you think about a lobster, lobster or a crab, yes, or yes. eating crab legs or something like that how hard that can be, or sometimes they even give you hammers or nutcrackers mm -hmm. to do that. And they have the hardest exoskeleton, so much harder than an insect. And certainly a spider has a very more, fle much more flexible exoskeleton. But it's the same basic uh, structure and design. And then as, if they shed these, is there any use for them? Do they... Uh, they will occasionally. Some of them will actually consume them Seriously. again to, you know, things are, uh, to, to re... Uh, hard, to re um, cycle the minerals mm -hmm. and the other types of nutrients that are in there, but not, not so much, I think, in some of the others. Okay. Um, and now once that, once that carapace is loosened, we want to lift it up. And as we lift it up, we want to try to keep material down in there, particularly there's a, a heart. So we'll kind of try to lift that up carefully as we go. So kind you might have some that might get the heart, some might not. Is that yeah? I think if John, yeah, I think you kind of lose lose heart. Yeah, if you want to hold on. To yeah, that well, right absolutely. There. Yeah, and then we can. You can see how it's kind of opening up here, and then this is the stomachs, which again are kind of sticking to the top. Wow, that one tore open. I think it's one of those two where you might have of ten, you might have one or two that are perfect. Yeah, you don't want to get too carried away with mm -hmm. it here. Anything, so but say as you as you lift that up. Is the heart on this one up on top yet, or is it? Yeah, he must be still up on top. I don't see it. So we can look. But it says these muscles tear and, oh no, there it is. There's the heart right there. And you can see the hearts on crayfish are really strange structures. They, um, um, they're, uh, op they have an open circulatory system, so they don't have a lot of blood vessels. The heart mm. just kind of keeps things circulating. I call it like a hot tub circulatory system. It's like moving the water or, or moving the blood around the body, but not necessarily contained within vessels. Low and pressure than high pressure? It has fairly low pressure, but uh, a lot of their, uh, you know, their needs are, are met by that system, particularly with a small body size that they have. Anyway, you can see the heart right here. It's got a little hole in it called the osteum. And so that little, that little, it'll be a pinkish, whitey structure that's sitting right there behind these large digestive glands. Kind of in that little group right there. So it's probably the first structure the kids would want to look yeah, for. Yeah, it might be the first one, and say probably the hardest one to keep intact. And let's just go ahead and remove that upper carapace there, and then you won't have to keep holding that up. Okay. There we go. And there's some muscles. You can see some muscles attached on there, and these are like the muscles that run the jaws, and many of the appendages are still attached on there. And so yeah, here we go. This, this animal kind of push these are the stomachs down here. Kind of push those back down. You're a saying bit. stomachs more than one stomach. Yeah, they have two chambered stomach. Let's turn him to the side here just a little bit. Okay. And as you look in this, you see that it has a pyloric stomach, which is closest to the mouth, and then a, or I'm sorry, a cardiac stomach, which is closest to the mouth, and then a pyloric stomach, which is more sac-like in, in, at the back. And you can see it's kind of covered by a lot of muscle here, so it makes it a little harder to see. But you can see this, you can see this hard uh, 
structure here that kind of separates the two stomachs, kind of protects us what they hang on to. So here again is the heart, sitting there in the middle of this, and then there's a lot of digestive glands. So this, all this whitish material here are the, is digestive glands, so a lot of the body cavity here is filled with, with digestive gland. And then the stomachs again, here's that, kind of push that to the side, that shows it again. Yeah. Here would be the cardiac stomach in the front and the pyloric stomach in the back, which will then give push on into the intestine. Um, we didn't mention some very prominent structures here on either side of the animal are these feathery gills. So you can see there's a lot of surface area there for, for extracting oxygen from the water. And these, and so you see those, that feathery look is like what a lot of gills look like. And so they're very large gills on both sides of the animal. Once in a while I'll see these on land, is that just a qu real quick then back yeah, in the water? Well, so, yeah, back in the water though, they can keep water in that, inside of that cavity. And that's like some of these land crabs, you know, you see in some area, Christi Christ or Christmas Island and some other areas, robber crabs and things in tropical areas. They can keep enough water sometimes inside of those uh, chambers to breathe on land. But that's relatively rare. Most of these, you know, push water over their gills. Mm -hmm. So what else are we looking for? So we have so far well, the heart circulatory system. Yeah, pretty much the heart's part of the, cir the, the circulatory system. The digestive system is complete but fairly short with a stomach for storing food, some grinding, digestive glands to, to help um, enzymes digestive then, produce so enzymes to help break down food. Um, we can now... Um, nervous system? Uh, very nervous difficult. system is hard to see. There's a ventral nerve cord with some s ganglia, some swellings in each structure, and we'll see a little, probably a little bit of that, but it's pretty hard to see that. These animals don't have really large brains. Most of the control is out in the, out in the segments, what we consider peripheral control. So what we can do at this point is actually take that stomach out of there, peel that, okay, and yeah, here's actually that, here's one of those ganglia, right here. Here's the two nerve cords coming down from the eyes and they go around, the, actually go around the esophagus. They're called the circle, circumesophageal uh, nerves. So that would be what passes for a brain would be right here in, in, a, in a crayfish and it's pretty small. They're pretty amazing what they can yeah, capture like, prey. Yeah, very instinct, I guess mm -hmm. we call very instinctive kind of things. I mean it's a sophisticated nervous system. It mm -hmm. functions very well but they just don't have that level of mm -hmm. central processing that we think of in vertebrates. How about um, any excretion or anything? Yeah, excretion, getting rid of body waste. They have some specialized structures here called antennal glands, also sometimes called green glands. because And these antennal glands, you can see they're right at the base of the antenna. So when you remove the stomach, there's a pair of them here, these sac-like structures right here and here. And those are in these antennal glands then. They take body fluids, they remove the waste from the breakdown mm -hmm. of the metabolism. They concentrate those wastes and then excrete it to the outside through an opening. It's like peeing, basically, mm -hmm. for, <laughs> yep. for, for crayfish. Anything else in the main body area here? Uh, not too much right there. I say they're really pretty simple. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. digestive gland, a lot of, you know, things, you know, structures there filled that up. And then if we actually go down that um, uh, abdomen, if we remove a few plates from the abdomen, Want to show that cut then too, or, or no, we can. a small part of that maybe? Yeah, if you just take your scissors again and cut down the through those plates on the abdomen. This would be probably the section you hear of people eating crayfish. Right, right, and shrimp and lobster, of mm -hmm. course. What we, you know, these they have these really powerful muscles, fast twitch muscles, which are mm -hmm. very have a very rich texture, very sweet. So you know, if you've had a lobster, things are, but you're eating the yes, you're eating the abdomen generally. And that'd be the section where we talked about the fast motion right, for escape. Right. And, and then the same. You, you just peel that back fairly nicely there. And there is the um, extensions of the digestive gland here. You can see this is all digestive gland, big Wonderful. fingers. Sure. Yeah. Big fingers of the digestive gland stretching back here. But here this structure running down between the muscles, these strong segmented muscles of the abdomen, is the uh, intestine, and this is actually, so that actually runs all, as we said, all the way to the tip. I'll hold this in here too, this one really shows it nice too. Yeah, yeah, so you can see as darker. And this is actually when they talk about deveining shrimp or something like this, really what you're taking out usually is the intestine, which has a little food in it and that gives it that dark, dark structure. And so there are the you know, powerful segmented muscles of the tail, and there's the, the end of the 
digestive system, the di di um, complete digestive tract, the intestine running down to the tip. So really, like I say, you know, all things considered, a pretty simple internal anatomy. Some of these structures are large, like you have a large stomach and this large digestive gland, which kind of functions like a liver in other groups. But, um, uh, you know, because the appendages do so much of the work, these animals have, you know, relatively simple structures. Extensive gills, got a heart, but you do see some really, you know, important systems here all working together. And as far as where we find these, fresh water? Yeah, most crayfish, they can live in brackish water. You know, think about the ones from the bayous and things of, of Louisiana. But crayfish are, are generally freshwater animals. Uh, very prolific, uh, very widespread. You find crayfish almost everywhere in, in, you know, in at least the northern hemisphere. And they're tolerant of fairly poor water quality. Um, they can, like I say, they can live kind of on the edge between water and land. So yeah, very common animals. Most kids have probably gone out and caught some mm -hmm. crayfish at, at one time or another. Well, thank you so much, Dale. Well, yeah, great. And I say they, they're a fascinating animal, and, and I'm glad to take a look through their body, their plan for us. And for additional you know, lesson plan, uh, photos, additional video, uh, visit the website. Like the crayfish? Yeah, Steve, we're going to look at a uh, crayfish today as a great example of a very interesting group of animals, the arthropods. Okay, and so yeah, we're going to look internally and actually because of the sophistication of the appendages of crayfish to handle food and to catch it, mephothorax in the abdomen meat here, you can see there's a little gap and you can get the scissors under that and then you want to cut forward along about down, about halfway down the side. Any forward chances the of mash it up and things. The internal anatomy is relatively simple, as we'll see. How do you suggest, the scalpel or the scissors? Yeah, or? I usually start with, a, with, a, with scissors, and what we want to do on the crayfish is cut through the carapace, this, uh, the cephalothorax, and where the Hello, I'm Stephen Rakusik with South Dakota Public Broadcasting. I'm Del Drogi, Professor of Biology at Dakota State University. And today we're going to 